I'm Esco, you can ask me anything. Today I'm gonna answer this question. How much free will do you have? Now I'm gonna completely ignore all the neuroscience that puts into doubt whether we even have free will in the first place. So I'm gonna assume for the sake of answering this question here and now and today that we do have some sort of free will. But if we by free will understand that we can choose between different options in different situations, we must consider that we can obviously only choose between options that we're able to imagine. So let me ask you this question. This is a thought experiment that I sort of borrowed from Sam Harris, I believe. Think of an actor. Think of a male actor. Now let me ask you this question. Was one of those actors Sylvester Stallone? Or the Danish old-timer Jens Ucking? Here he is. No? Could you have chosen to think about Sylvester Stallone or Jens Ucking? I think the answer is no. And there are two different reasons for why you didn't come up with Sylvester Stallone or Jens Ucking. Jens Ucking, I'm guessing most of you have never heard of him, obviously. Sylvester Stallone, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe some of you did come up with Sylvester Stallone. But the thing is, we really don't have that much control over what finds its way into our conscious minds. And we can probably agree that in order to make a free choice, in order for, to have free will in a given situation, we need to be consciously aware of the options at our disposal, right? That's not rocket science. So is there anything you can do to change your mind or to train your brain so that the next time someone asks you to think of an actor, you would not only think of Sylvester Stallone and Jens Ucking, but also of all the other male actors you've ever heard of. I mean, at this stage in our technological and biotechnological development, the answer will have to be no. There's nothing you can do to change that. And the same goes when you're in a situation where you're about to make a choice. And add to that, that the people we surround ourselves with are happy to give us <laughs> a limited choice. So maybe your partner says, you want to go to the beach today? It would seem that you have to decide whether no, you don't want to go to the beach or yes, you do want to go to the beach. But are those your only options really? Isn't this another Sylvester Stallone situation really? Another example, the next time you're hungry, what do you want to eat? You can really only choose between the options that come to mind, right? I just ate. I ate some stuff that was in my fridge that I cooked last night and some bread in my freezer. I mean, what were my options really? And we're not even considering how my brain chemistry might affect all these choices or options as well. Did I have a choice to Cook Nina, my kitty in the background here that you can't see right now, or to go find some crops on a nearby field, or how about Chinese, or Thai, or <laughs> or Russian kushin, or sauerkraut. I, I mean, these are things that come to mind. But can I really choose all the things that don't come to mind? I, I can't. I mean, I have really limited options. And I think I said enough to make this point. So one more point. So I don't currently follow a meditation practice, but I did a few years back and I probably will again at some point in the future. And for to those of you who have tried to meditate, one of the most common things that people share once they try starting a, a meditation routine of some sort is that, oh, I just it's just not for me. I don't know how to do it or I can't make it work. But the reason you can't make it work is because you're told, or you, <laughs> at least you think you're supposed to sit down, close your eyes, and empty your mind. Think of nothing. And you can't think of nothing. You keep thinking of things. This is sort of a testament to the automaticity of the way your mind works. And, and there are even such a simple little observation. There are many points to be drawn from that, right? One is, first of all, you cannot control it. You cannot just decide to not think of something. And when you try to do so,
do you choose the thoughts that come to mind, so to speak, when you try not to think of anything? Uh, you, you really don't, do you? But what you can do once you settle into a meditation routine, you can start noticing the patterns in these thoughts that come to mind. I remember, I mean, I've been doing it on and off for yeah, about a decade, I guess, a little more. I think the first time I had a meditation routine going, I would typically find myself, my thoughts gravitating towards plans and dreams and ideas I had. Then, a couple of years later, I think I was a little more semi-depressive state of mind, perhaps. Um, the second time around, I would always gravitate towards negative thoughts. It would always be the same patterns. I could really clearly see these patterns that, oh, is this jealousy thought or some worry about some financial situation or some, something along those lines. So it would, be, it would seem to be some type of reflection of the general state of mind or general state of mood, maybe rather, that I would find myself in in that period. Those would be the thoughts that arose when I tried to not think of anything. And I think that's very important also when we search for the boundaries of our free choices. And I mentioned this in a video I did recently, but I really want to just leave you with this one simple takeaway, this one simple answer to this very complex question. How much free will do we have? We have as much free will as our current consciousness allows us to have. I mean, I don't mean this in any woo sense at all. I just mean if you're not conscious of a choice or an option, you might be affected by subconscious processes, but when you're in the situation, when you're about to make a choice, you can only choose between the options that are available to you on a conscious level. That's what I mean by it. And that's actually one of my main motivations behind running this channel. It is that for me to entertain these complex, super deep, sometimes toxic questions on an almost daily basis, it really forces me, it forces me to explore more options in some metaphorical sense than I would have otherwise ever done. And I hope and actually believe that that goes for the people watching th these videos as well. I mean, the next time you're <laughs> a friend or a partner asks you, you wanna, wanna go to the beach? Just think about it, right? Or you wanna watch a movie? Or, I, I mean, what are your options really? There are always more options that you can identify. I mean, hardly any situations are binary when you're supposed to make a choice, but it seems that they are binary because other people or structures, I mean, even, even just opening your Netflix account. So that's the main message I wanna leave you with. Notice this, notice how limited your options are and notice how your options are defined by the options that you are consciously aware of. And maybe try to push yourself the next time you're facing even a trivial little choice. I mean, bacon or chicken or <laughs> vanilla or chocolate ice cream. Force yourself to expand your range of options. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel. You'll see me every day, Sunday through Thursday. And I'm asking you can ask me anything. Don't hesitate to ask me your questions in the comments below this video. I also appreciate feedback on the stuff I talk about in these videos. The comments are actually super helpful. Some of these little videos I will use to create podcast episodes over on my podcast MetaQuest. Uh, and it's actually very helpful for me to have other people's inputs before I try to sort of expand these very <laughs> tricky topics. So uh, thank you very much for watching. You'll see me again tomorrow. Have a good one. Cheers.